Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com. Today let's talk about color. And the first thing I'm going to ask is, what colors do you see here? It would be very reasonable to say uh, maybe sort of gray, brown. The fact is, what you're actually seeing is blue, red, and white. In fact, very vibrant blue, red, and white. But the reason it doesn't look vibrant is because you're seeing it at sunset, and it's sort of a backlit image. And I sample these colors directly out of you know, a white sail, a red stripe, or a blue pinstripe. We've seen all these things in daylight, but the changed conditions makes these final results look totally different. And this is one of the central challenges when you're learning to paint color, is that color doesn't mean solid blue or solid red. It's got a lot of nuance, and a lot of it has to do with light and time of day. And there's a lot of different ways to learn this stuff, but I want to introduce a neat piece of $7 software called Color Constructor, which is made by Murray Lancashire. So what do we have here? Well, we have the red, white, and blue, sort of similar to the photographic example, and this is maybe more what you'd picture. We sort of think of rendering often in these terms. Very vibrant, core shadow, you know, really simplified. But what's really fun about this software is that it allows you to play around with light interactively, and the end result is sort of understanding color a little bit better. So this is pure unsaturated light. But what if, instead of clean white light like that, it was uh, sort of a reddish light? You know, this is a very extreme example. Clearly sunset isn't quite this red. But you can see what happens is the light in the scene settings is applied to all of these spheres at the same time. So these are all the starting or local color, which is then a, has light applied to it. And the end result here is this color swatch range. So let me take the saturation out and you can see it again. So see here, the blue is the same swatch as you'd imagine, sort of saturated blue down to dark. These are grayscale over here on the side. But then when I apply colored light to it, watch what happens. Things that were gray now become red. And that's just how light works. So I think this software is really neat because it's not super realistic like 3D software would be, but it's really quick and it's really easy. And on top of that, it happens to be physically accurate, but as just an interactive tool to start digging around in how color works, I think this has a lot of power. So let's see what else we could change. I'm going to desaturate the light again. And now I'm going to add in some ambient light. Sometimes you have a key light, sort of a directional light source, and then you also have light bouncing around your scene. So here I'm going to add in some ambient light, and I'm going to make this a little bluish. So we have sort of a desaturated key light and a blue ambient. And now I'm going to try changing the local color of these objects. So we'll go with the red one here. Just like Photoshop, I can move these hue saturation value sliders. I can change this color right here, the top large square, to whatever I want it to be. So I have sort of two options here. I can either change the objects themselves, or I can change the light that's affecting the scene. And there's a way to sort of balance how much ambient you have versus how much key light. So just as an interactive tool, I feel like this is very powerful. But the reason it was made was actually to give color palettes for Photoshop. So if you can hit the swatch button here, you actually get this very nice, very clear little selection of colors. So you can just screenshot this and bring it straight into Photoshop. And then you can have your palette ready to go. And this is so interesting because you might think, well, I want to have a red object in my scene. Okay, so I could then change this to be sort of a reddish color. And once you have that red object, you might start thinking about what kind of light looks neat. Because colored light, even only subtly colored light, can really pull a scene together. So here this is sort of yellowish light and bluish fill. And you can just sort of balance these until you get a look you like. Another nice thing to see is if you sort of break the RGB spectrum, it'll let you know. If I, for instance, try to blow out the saturation here, I get these arrows. That's saying this is impossible. So this is a nice thing to just see how far can you push it. So I think having this all be interactive is like a color playground. But the really nice thing is you know all the objects in your scene are consistent. I can change these local values for each object, and yet they all are receiving the same light. So if I then used this color palette here in a Photoshop painting, I'd have a really good start. I'd know that the colors would work together because they're sort of physically plausible. 
So in the next video, I'm going to talk about using this software to do some painted studies. But for now, I would just download this software, it costs seven bucks, there's a link in the bottom of the post, play around. This is really powerful stuff, and I think more people should hear about it. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.